If you enjoy this type of pattern, please tap that thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. Do you have pattern tutorial ideas? I'm all ears. At yarnspirations.com you can review the free pattern. Scroll down and see the rating and reviews from others. Read the pattern yourself. Better yet, share your tips or advice by leaving a meaningful comment as it helps others. I actually use those comments myself when I'm struggling to understand the pattern. Share some advice on things that you've learned in the pattern or even just leave a nice note of appreciation. Good day and welcome back to the Crochet Crowd. This is my friends over at Yarnspirations.com. Today we have the Soapy Apron. This is a little mini apron that you can add to a soap bottle. Now the bottle here is this whole contraption is about nine and a half inches. I do not have different apron sizes for different types of bottles. So this is just more of a generic uh, pattern today in order to work our way through it. You'll need a four millimeter size G crochet hook in order to play and of course anything with that is going to get wet in crochet you should use 100% cotton and I'm recommending either Lily Sugar and Cream or Bernat Handicraft or Cotton. These are 100% cotton and they can withstand getting wet and etc. So without further ado we're just gonna jump right in today and we're gonna get ourselves started and let's begin our journey with the soap apron next. So let's begin by chaining 11. You're gonna hear my cat in the background. She wants in the studio. She jumps on the table so she's not allowed in. So it's a chain of 11 to begin. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and 11. So let's begin now the first row. First row we're gonna go second chain from the hook. So just count back. So one and two. Get the back hump of the chain. It will look nicer and I want you to single crochet across your chain on the back hump going all the way across to the other side. You should have a total count of 10 single crochets when you get over there and it should naturally happen anyway. So but if you wanna count you can do that and you can find the counts on the written pattern if you want to confirm anything. So let's do that and I'll see you at the end of row number one in a moment. When you get to the end of row number one I did confirm there is 10 just for my own satisfaction. Turn your work and let's begin row number two. Row number two we're going to do an increase. So we're just going to chain up one and in the first one you need to place in two single crochets. This will allow it to grow by one stitch on this side of the work. And then I need you to slam in one single crochet into each of the stitches all the way to the other side and on the very last um, stitch that you have you want to place in two single crochets and I'll be there in just a moment. So I'm on my last stitch next and so I need you to place in two single crochets there and that will increase it then on that side equally as well. Turn to work and let's begin row number three. In row number three you're just gonna chain up one and just place in one single crochet into each stitch all the way across. There is no increasing required and the reason for this is it's allowing the decrease in the last or sorry the increase in the last row to naturally just kinda wanna fan out uh, equally. So please do that one single crochet in your stitches all the way across and then we're gonna turn our work and we're gonna do a repeat pattern just for a little bit and we'll talk about that in a moment. So one single in each right to the end. Let's turn your work and let's talk about the repeat pattern that's next. So now I need you to do rows number four, five, six, and seven. And so it's a repeating at rows number two and three. So it's you're gonna start back on row number two and then do number three and then row number two and then row number three. So you can just uh, funnel back in the video in order to go back. So just rewind. You can see the video chapters. So please do these next four rows. So you're gonna do rows number two and three and then two and three and then I'll see you at the end of number uh, uh, seven and we'll start number eight together. So please do those four rows now. Okay so now that seven is complete we're going to move on to number eight. So you're gonna chain up one and you're just going to apply one single crochet in each stitch all the way across. This will help equalize it and balance it and then you'll move on to number nine in just a moment. So I'll see you there in a second. So just one single crochet and then turn your work at the end and we'll start number nine in a moment. So row number nine there's actually a, a paste and copy error. When I work in the background I know that this is true as well. It says RST two single crochets. That is missing the words FI or the letters FI. It should say first two single crochets. That always happens when you have the the uh, word first. I don't know why it just does. So anyway, so if you call my attention to it I already know about it. So we're going to start by chaining one and you're gonna put the first two stitches together. So you're just gonna go into the first stitch, pull through and you're gonna go into the next stitch, pull through and then pull through all three stitches and th that will be coming two together. Now you're gonna just single crochet yourself all the way across 
and uh, you're gonna come all the way there. So there are people that like to review the patterns as they go and they like to call my out oh, my mistakes. So I just wanted to call attention to that before uh, somebody makes that comment because I already know about it. <coughs> There's worse things in life. Um, right. So we're gonna go all the way to the end and you're gonna leave the last two empty and you're gonna put those two together as one. So just pull through the next and then the next one pull through see three loops, pull through all three and that was the two together at the end and you'll notice that it's gonna start shrinking or decreasing once again. Let's uh, begin and let's do number 10. In number 10 you're just going to chain up one and you'll do one single crochet in each stitch all the way across and when you get to the other side please turn your work and we'll get ready for numbers uh, 11 through 16 which is going to be a repeat and I'll be back in just a moment. So rows number 11 through 16 is a repeat of rows number 9 and 10 and it's a total of three times just so that you know. So number 9 is a decrease and number 10 is just a regular. So and then the next one will be a decrease and then a regular and decrease and then regular. So I just write it on my sheet and I just check it off as they go. So if as you start the repeat again you can go back to the instructions for number 9 and 10 and just do those three more times and then you'll meet me back here and then we'll pick you up and we'll start number 11. So please do that now and I'll be right back in just a moment. Okay so I'm now at the end of number 16 so you can see it came in quite nicely. So now we wanna do an increase back out. So now we have to repeat round our rows number two and three a total of three more times and that will take you to the end of number 22. So just to recap you can just go back in the video chapters to get row number two and three once again. So you'll do those a total of three times. So do two and three, two and three and two and three. So just to quickly recap when you start up number two is just an increase so you'll be getting bigger again and then row number three you'll just be going single crochet across. So please do those uh, six rows next and I'll see you at the end and we'll start number 23 in just a moment. So now that we've increased again so we are now at the end of number 22 I've already turned. So number 23 is the same as the third row so you're just gonna chain up one and just apply one single crochet in each stitch going all the way across and then we'll talk about what to do next at the end of that. So turn your work and I'll begin number 24 in a moment. So let's begin and we're going to do number 24 all the way through 29 and it's a total of six rows. You can reverse back the video for the video chapters if you need that. And so just remember nine and nine is just a reduction and then you reduce on the other side and then 10 is just a regular single crochet across. So please do this all the way and stop at the end of number 29 where I'll meet you there in just a moment. So please do your decreasing and I'll be right back. So I'm now at the end of number 29. So this is where I'm going to end and let me just zoom you out just to get you this shape. Okay, pretty cool right? So you can see that the base has a little bit of a wider area. So I want you to fasten this off and I want you to use a tapestry needle to weave in any ends that you have. This will be a, an item that you will be touching or somebody will be. Great little craft show idea too for this just so you know. So what I want you to do is take the ends and just weave it through. I don't know why I'm shaking this today. I'm not feeling the best. You probably can hear it in my voice. Somebody's gonna comment. Yeah you're not feeling well. By the time you see this video I will be recovered. Um, I film sometimes several weeks in advance. So I'm probably not sick at the time that this goes out. <coughs> it's just a cold just so you know too just to keep it above table because I did get tested and stuff just to verify. So what we have here is just weaving in my ends. Um, and those for that people that know me well I don't like to talk about medical so I don't like to get into that as well. Um, it's just one of my personal preferences. It's really nobody's business to be honest with you. <laughs> Does that sound mean? You can let me know in the comments if I'm sounding mean. I just don't like talking about medical stuff. I feel it's so personal especially on a social media platform. Okay so I'm just weaving in my ends back and forth. Get it nice and stuck in there and then we'll start our edging which is going to begin our next part. So let's begin the edging and so I'm just using a different color blue. I'm just using some spare yarn that I have and we wanna start at the top section right here and what I want to do is that I wanna evenly space out single crochets as I go around. So just starting in the top here and I'm just going to attach with a standing single crochet. It doesn't say to do that but 
I'm telling you that's what I'm doing. <laughs> you can attach chain one in one single crochet if you prefer. I just think the standing looks better. So just evenly trace around the stitch or sorry the stitch work with this because you've used single crochets like this each uh, um, row is equaling to one single crochet if that helps you to know that. And I want you to go all the way around. You do not have to add any extra stitches when you're turning any corners. Just let it naturally just go around and I will see at the end of this section here. This is the edging of the first round and then we'll talk about what we're gonna do next after that because we're almost done already. So I'm coming back to the top and I'm gonna show you a little cheating technique. Of course you can always refer to the pattern if you wanna be more technical. And I don't think the chain really matters as far as like what we're, um, what I'm about to do here. So that's your call if you'd like to do it. So technically it says to fasten off and then it states that you are going to start on the other side and then do a chain 13 and then join it. So what I'm going to recommend to you here is just turn your work because you know why not. So instead of fastening off just keep that yarn strand on there and just chain 13. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 and 13 and then just go to the other side the corner piece and just slip stitch. Right? The chain I don't think it matters like if you're on the right side or wrong side. I really don't. But you can decide. <coughs> you can leave me a comment if that matters to you. <laughs> and if it does I'm gonna say oh that's nice for you. So I'm here currently on so when I finished I was here. So I wanna make sure that when I fasten this off this will be on the inside which it is. So I'm just going to just take my tapestry needle and hide that end. So we still have one more thing to do and it is the middle tie and the middle tie is just something that you just tie around the bottle itself. Um, it's not actually attached to this at all. So because this is 100% cotton if it gets dirty no big deal just toss it in the washing machine or just rinse it off in the sink and let it air dry it should be good. So it says to make two ties. So there's gonna be a tie on this side and this side. So I just figured that out because I started filming. I'm like oh I get it now. <laughs> okay so what I want to do is I wanna start just keep a generous long tail just because you can. And we need to make two of these and what I'm about to do is that I'm just gonna chain a total of 39. So this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Go all the way to 39 and meet me back here in just a moment. So I've just chained 39. So what I wanna do is come to this narrow part right here and I'm just gonna, this is the right side of the project and I'm just going to match it to the middle part here and I wanna slip stitch it then to there. And I am going to then trim this yarn and we're going to fasten this off at this point. So just pull it through the loop and just use your tapestry needle to hide in your loose ends. Let me show you this here and you'll have to do this twice. You'll have to do it for the other side and then this becomes one tie and then you'll have two when you do the other side, right? <laughs> it's not rocket science. So what I would think about doing is that I don't wanna impede with that at all. So I'm just gonna turn it over and I'm going to just weave in the ends here on the back side of this here. Okay, and that'll hold it and I wanna go to a total of three times. So just be nice and generous with the, just staying in behind. So don't make this needle go to the opposite side of the work. Stay on the back. So that was twice and then three times. So the other issue that you're going to have is that the other side of this tie will have those loose ends that you, that you had. So what we want to do is we want to pull that up feel like I'm rambling today which I probably am. You can let me know in the comments if I'm rambling. <laughs> okay so what I want to do is just take this strand and I just want to just weave it in a little bit here just to help it tie onto itself. Okay and I'm gonna go back through again. Three times is the magic number. The other thing you could have done is you could have pulled it extremely um, tight and then cut it really close to the knot as well. You can do that. It's up to you. And so this is the first one. So you wanna do the same with the second side. So chain 39, attach it and then weave in your ends and that will be good to go. So I'll be back in a moment and I'll get that done for you and I'll show you the final look. So I have now have it done. I have all my ends woven in 
and so now I just gotta find a bottle that this will match. So this is pretty cool. This is the soapy apron. Uh, kind of a cool pattern. It's going one of those things that you can put on your um, your kitchen counter of course and that'd be pretty awesome. So let me see if I can find a bottle. I'll put a photo on now if I have one and I will see you again next time. And this is Mikey on behalf of the Crochet Crowd as well as my friends at YarnSpirations.com. See ya.